Welcome. This short video, we're going to talk about zero coupon bonds. We're going to define how the financial instrument works. We're going to talk about how we calculate their yields, and we're going to look at some examples. Zero coupon bonds are also known as discount bonds. And they're known as discount bonds because they're purchased at a price less than face value. In other words, F, our face value, will always be larger than the purchase price, P. They're redeemed for face value at maturity. There are no other interest payments in between. So what happens is there's an implied interest rate that comes from the difference, from the discount between what you pay for the bond and what you receive at maturity. And of course that discount has to be adjusted based on how long you wait to receive it. Most zero coupon bonds are short term bonds out in financial markets. They're issued with less than one year to maturity. For example, treasury bills are zero coupon bonds and they're issued at maturities of one year and below. This is because you wait till the maturity to get your money and most investors don't want to wait that long to receive any cash flows. So in practice, zero coupon bonds tend to be shorter term bonds. So we're going to measure the yield on our zero coupon bond by a specific measure of the interest rate known as the yield to maturity. So yield to maturity or YTM is measured as a percent. It's a measure of interest rate. And specifically, it's an interest rate where the price of the bond would be equal to the present value of the future cash flows. So it's the interest rate where discounted cash flows promised to the owner are exactly equal to the price paid. Again, if the specific financial instrument has a maturity of less than a year or more than a year, we'll have to adjust the yield to maturity because by convention, we annualize this and quote interest rates as annual rates. Now let's look at an example for a zero coupon bond. So in my example, again, this is a short term bond, it's going to have 200 days to maturity, a purchase price of $98.50, and a face value of $10,000. So we want to calculate what the yield to maturity is on this zero coupon bond. So the yield to maturity is going to solve the following equation. So $98.50 is the purchase price, present value, and it's going to be equal to the discounted future cash flow. So a future cash flow is $10,000. We wait a fraction of a year, right, 200, 360 fifths of a year, and we'll discount it by this interest rate, and that's our yield to maturity. So here's this. We actually want to solve for i. So algebraically, we could solve for i here because it's a very simple problem. We only have one future cash flow. We can also use Excel to help us. Let's look at the algebra first, and then we'll look at a spreadsheet. Okay. So here I'm just actually putting the interest rate on one side and the numbers on the other side. And in doing so, I can actually isolate the yield to maturity, calculate it, and I get about 2.8%. Let's confirm that using an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to pop out here to Excel. And we'll look at a function. So we're calculating the yield to maturity. We want to know an interest rate, so we use the function called rate. So the number of periods here. Well, this is a fraction of a year. It's particularly, it's 200, 360 fifths as a fraction of the year. Payments, as a zero coupon bond, there are no payments in between. Present value, we pay 98.50 for the bond, so we input that as a negative. And finally, the future value is the $10,000 face value that we are promised as the owner of the bond. And sure enough, we are rounding, we get 2.8%. In general, for days to maturity, for less than a year to maturity here, and for the yield to maturity, a face value, and the price, the price of a zero coupon bond is done by this expression and the yield to maturity by the second equation below it. So let's consider a little intuition here for a minute. So let's consider um, a $10,000 treasury bill with 100 days to maturity and a $10,000 treasury bill with 182 days to maturity. Suppose they both have a yield of 5%. If that's true, one of them must have a lower price. And which one would it be? Would it be the bond you wait 100 days for or the one you wait 182 days for? Which one would have the lower price? Well, let's take that intuition and turn it into calculation. So in this case, I'm calculating the price of each of these bonds. This one has 100 days to maturity, 5% yield to maturity. 
The lower one has 182 days to maturity and a 5% yield to maturity. And indeed, the bond where you wait longer for the future cash flow will have a cheaper price. Because we know a financial asset is less valuable the longer you wait for the future payments. Now, this yield to maturity that we calculate is in fact what's known as an effective annual yield or an effective annual return. In other words, we annualized our yield by compounding over the days to maturity. And in this case, it's a fraction of a year and we adjusted for that. And an effective annual yield and compounding this way gives us a true measure of the yield to maturity of this bond. A true measure of what our return is if we buy this bond and hold it until maturity under these conditions. Alternatively, by convention in financial markets, zero coupon bonds are often quoted on what's called a bond equivalent yield. This is not a true yield to maturity, but it's an alternative measure of an annual interest rate. A bond equivalent yield comes by multiplying the yield for the period, in our case it was 200 days, by the number of periods in that year. And doing so gives us an annual rate, but it doesn't take into account compounding. And so it's not quite a true yield to maturity, because truly if that bond, at the end of 200 days, you receive your face value payment, you can turn around and reinvest it. A bond equivalent yield doesn't really take that into account. It understates the true yield to maturity, so you may ask yourself why would anyone use a measure like this. This is often a convention in bond markets because many, many decades ago when we didn't have spreadsheets to make things so handy, this was computationally convenient and by convention they've survived in financial markets. So to compare, our effective annual yield we saw earlier looks something like that. Face value relative to price, adjusting for the fraction of the year. A bond equivalent yield in the exact same situation, you notice we're multiplying by the fraction of the year. We're not compounding, but instead we're just multiplying to make an adjustment. So as you can imagine, without counting the compounding, you're going to get a smaller number. Specifically, let's think about um, the zero coupon bond example we've been using. 200 days to maturity, right? price of 98.50, face value of $10,000. The bond equivalent yield, using the equation on the previous slide, face value of $10,000, price of 98.50, 200 days to maturity, we get a bond equivalent yield of 2.78%. And this understates a true yield to maturity that's closer to 2.8%.